1v1 on Langris Gaia. Bernadette La Chouette versus Banana in Pajamas. We've got US forces in the north. Airborne armor and infantry company available. Classic three. Banana in Pajamas playing as Oster in the south. And he has mechanized assault, Jaeger infantry, and close air support in his loadout. Throwing up some barbed wire here on his cutoff in the north and sending his first rifle squad to take control of the victory point over here on the left. Meanwhile, pioneers taking control of various territory and two squads of grenadiers being fielded. take control of various points over there on the left side. Pioneers reporting objective captured. The new grenadier squad is ready. Well, I guess if I had to guess, I would say probably airborne or infantry. Don't think armor company is all that useful on this map. You really want LMGs on a map like this, and infantry offers, of course, the priest. Having indirect fire on this map is also a wonderful, wonderful asset. As far as banana pajamas, I'm guessing mechanized assault. But cl close air support uh, has been wriggling its way into the meta as well. In fact, apparently, uh, there's a thread on the forums arguing whether or not it's overpowered. Or overperforming, I guess is the word used, so... We have a fresh grenadier squad. I'm not sure what I think about that, although we certainly have been seeing it a lot lately. And it's just one of those commanders that you kind of have to adapt your your playstyle to when you detect that your opponent has chosen it, kind of like counterattack or anything anything else with like one or two key features that sort of radically alters the pace of the game. With counterattack, it's for Mother Russia. Or the B4. And with close air support, of course, it's redistribute resources and generally the, la the planes and the lack of heavy tanks. The new grenadier squad is ready. Four grenadiers to four riflemen soon. Which makes me think Captain Tier, maybe? Or possibly a quick AA half track. Probably not an M20. We have liberated the objective! We are losing a sector. And US forces is not taking any of the territory here in the north at all. Instead focusing all his riflemen in one location so that the very first engagement will certainly Our go in his favor. Although he's kind of moving over here to the right side now for some reason. Which is actually probably going to cause him to lose the first engagement if he doesn't get back over there towards the left. Fortunately, the Grenadier's first opening volley did zero damage to this rifle squad at all. And a fourth rifle squad is moving up to support. Nana in pajamas just playing defensively for now. And that engagement went all wrong for those riflemen. Grenadiers were already positioned nicely in green cover and had superior numbers to those riflemen. They tried to close the distance, but it just didn't work out because one rifle squad was tied up here in the north and the other was busy capturing this victory point. Banana in pajamas wins the engagement quite decisively and is now going to make a push for the allied territories. And Bernadette Lach uh, Lachouette has not yet purchased any officers. Opponents are a sector. Banana will secure building control here and start bleeding these riflemen as they move past. Take two losses already, and I think that they may be going straight for the victory point? Or just this building, but I'm not sure what that really accomplishes. And a machine gun has been set up perfectly to defend the fuel over here and forces another retreat from these riflemen. American players are getting shut down at every turn. And you can really see how much of a struggle it can be to play as U.S. forces versus Oster in the north. Grenadier 
These open fields make it difficult for riflemen to close the distance, and the hedges make it quite easy for MG42s to set up defenses that make harassment extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible. Battle phase one has completed. And riflemen are moving to take control of that strategic point, while more riflemen are making their way down as well. They will have to contend with grenadiers in this building. Still no grenades researched. In fact, I don't think there are any... Oh, grenades in progress now, and no ambulance yet either. It's starting to float a little bit. Enemy is he has fielded himself a lieutenant, sector. getting himself an ambulance next, and doesn't quite have the fuel for an AA hat track because of the fuel he just spent on the grenade upgrade. But now that he has grenades, he should have no problem getting rid of squads and buildings, and he should have the tools he needs to fire smoke grenades at MG42 and continue to set up flanks and closed gaps. Nice and he has chosen airborne. Two grenades into the building, almost destroy it, but the Grenadier does get away with a sliver of health remaining. Ambulance is about to complete, and the engagements continue to go in the Oster's favor. Lots of uh, LMGs being purchased here on these Grenadier squads. All munitions, in fact, being spent on infantry upgrades, as far as I can tell. And why not? He has such great munitions control. So early in the game, he's just dominating on at every turn. Taking control of the right side munitions, in fact, now. And Bernadette Rilichouette really needs to... ...field something that's going to turn the situation around for him, whether it's BARs, whether it's a light vehicle of some kind, or just more stuff. He really needs these engagements to go more favorably. He's rapidly losing map control, and he's losing the manpower war. Getting himself a 50 cal now, that should hopefully help a little. but it can be difficult to use offensively. The enemy is taking our territory. Rifleman moving up. Nicely spread out, getting a surround going on that uh, Grenadier squad, firing a smoke grenade so that it won't be able to fire on riflemen as they close the distance, forcing the Grenadiers to reposition to safety. The MG42 is currently hiding behind the hedge, so it's not an immediate threat, and rear echelon troops are making their way across the north with the support of these two squads to try and harass the Oster fuel, which in turn, the U.S. forces fuel is being harassed over here on the right side by an LMG Grenadier squad. Second squad will be forced to retreat once the smoke clears. Gets away with just one man remaining. And still no vehicles of any kind from uh, Bernadette. Other than the ambulance. MG42 is positioned nicely for this engagement, and it doesn't look like the U.S. Forces player was paying attention as he walked right into that. Got suppressed and then forced to retreat. If he had been watching, he probably could have utilized some grenades during that, of either smoke grenades or frag, to try and turn that engagement or just have it go a little more favorably. Deploy smoke over here so we can close the gap on that Grenadier squad. Frag grenade misses, unfortunately. We've also got a Teller Mine, by the way, here on the center of Victory Point. Not sure if the U.S. player knows about it. He does have a Minesweeper, so probably not, because he probably would have swept it up by now if he did. But there's a decent chance it's going to get swept up before anything hits it. As far as tech, uh, he's got 110 fuel in the bank. Probably could go major. He's also throwing up a fuel cache here, so he clearly intends to be throwing out as many tanks as possible. But throwing up that cash before getting himself his major. And grabbing himself a squad of paratroopers as well. And upgrading with uh, Brownings. Are 
securing our territory. Spots the mine there with his mine sweeper. His 50 cal gets forced away by LMG grins and Panzer Grenadiers narrowly making an escape. These two rifle squads on the flank dealing nice damage to those Panzer Grenadiers and another squad over here doing what it can from the right side. But ultimately it looks like the US player will be forced to make a full retreat. Brian, what are you doing? <sighs> and a full squad of riflemen just got wiped for no real reason there. I'm not sure. I guess he just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grenadier is making their way to take control of the strategic point and fuel point there. I think that was the first squad wipe of the game. As long as I didn't miss any, pretty sure, yeah. Our opponents are seizing a sector. We have our reinforcements. Paratroopers are setting up in cover up here, trying to defend the cutoff slash fuel cache. Meanwhile, various squads doing what they can in this area, trying to get the victory points under control and get a triple cap going for as long as possible. Probably not going to be all that long, though. Grenadiers moving up to counter harass. These two squads should be able to hold the line for a little while. But probably just a matter of time before whatever's coming out of the support armor core forces him away. Smoke grenade on the MG42 will prevent it from firing. 50 cal doing decent damage to grenadiers and forcing a retreat. Very favorable engagement for the US player there on the right side. Meanwhile, the riflemen over here try and close the distance for a grenade, maybe? Dodging a rifle grenade quite nicely. And they will simply try and burst those grenadiers down at close range. The pioneers and panzer grenadiers are making their way out of the base with a flamethrower. And force a full retreat from the US player, including the lieutenant there in the back. No, it's not, it's a 50 cal. If you thought I was talking about the paratrooper 30 cals, you were wrong. I was talking about this. They're both present. Standing by. Panzer Grenadiers are taking control of the strategic point over here. And riflemen are grabbing the strategic point. More riflemen taking control of the fuel. All in all, American map control was very good for that series of pushes. It went quite well. Hopefully he'll be able to... Uh, Keep the pressure up, bounce off of that a little bit, keep things going. Good decision to get the AT gun here. Panzer IV is in production if he gets... Watch for counterattacks! Uh, Jackson? Uh, Jackson would definitely do massive damage to that Panzer IV and would hard counter what he's building. If he goes for the Sherman instead, he'll have to be a little bit more careful with how he uses it, but... Um, yes. It'll, of course, give him that really powerful anti-infantry utility. I think Jacksons are just generally better overall in this map. It's really hard to use a Sherman effectively on Langer Sky because everything is just long range, long range, everything. Uh, vulnerable to packs, vulnerable to mines and Faust. Anything that'll damage your engine because then a pack can just kill you while your engine is damaged if you don't immediately follow up with uh, some smoke or something like that. So. Jacksons and Scott seem to perform a little better on Langerskaya than Sherman's do, but we'll see what he decides to do. He's given himself this fuel cache. He clearly intends to go pretty hard into Tier 4, but he's stockpiling a, a little heavy on the fuel because he had to get himself this AT gun while he waits for a tank to hit the field. And as a result, this Panzer IV is going to have quite a bit of time before... Um, before anything can really counter it, giving him quite a window of opportunity where he can inflict a lot of damage on his opponent. Unfortunately, it's tied up on the left side, and this charge for the left, for the right isn't going that well, although that squad risks getting wiped. It's really late to retreat. Looks like it will get away. The 50 cal has suppressed all the grenadiers making this push. Gren uh, riflemen in green cover are not taking all that much damage. Rifle grenade will wipe the 50 cal, though. There it goes, and more grenadiers on the flank will cause further problems. It looks like uh, anti-tank rifle grenade damaged the Panzer IV's engine there on the left side, but it is going to get away. The AT gun wanted to move to follow up, but just wasn't going to be able to make it happen. 50 cal without support just gets chewed up by those LMGs easily. Paratroopers had to retreat, and 
There weren't enough riflemen available to support, which means he just handed that weapon over to his opponent. Ooh, did he just wipe a Grenadier squad, though? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I think he just wiped a Grenadier squad that crewed that thing. Either that or was already at three men. I'm pretty sure. I don't see the Grenadier's corpse, but he had four Grenadier squads before, now he's only got three. I'm pretty sure he just lost a Grenadier squad because he crewed that 50 cal. Whoops. It had an LMG, too. Panzer IV has been fully repaired over here on the left side. It was already at three men. Okay, maybe it was a calculated decision to sacrifice that Grand Squad for an IMG. I have no idea why he would do that. But. Okay. Sherman he has gone Sherman. He even knows that there's a Panzer IV in the field, and he still went Sherman. And I, I personally think a Jackson would have been a safer call since he has a decent amount of anti-infantry firepower from his uh, paratroopers. But he also has a decent amount of anti-tank in the form of the P-47 when he gets the munitions for that. So either way, he's got a lot of tools at his disposal. AT gun moving up to force that Panzer IV out of position, but riflemen are also forced to retreat by the MG42 there. He didn't quite get a smoke grenade off, but he doesn't have to retreat far and he can move back into the engagement soon. Browning is on the paratroopers engaging those grenadiers, but they are in green cover. AT gun is repositioning to try to get a line on the Panzer IV should it show itself. gun lands one hit on the rear armor of the Panzer IV. Gets into very close range on those riflemen, but they're not going with the AT grenade. Just trying to capture the point, but they're taking heavy damage. Probably won't even... Oh, they do go with the AT grenade. Panzer IV's engine will be damaged. The AT gun is slowly making its way forward to try to engage, and riflemen are making their way forward as well. Grenade going out on the stolen 50 cal. They're very clumped. No green cover, and boom, there it goes. Squad is wiped. The Panzer IV has fallen down to only a tiny sliver, and the AT gun wants to finish the job. Where is the Sherman? It's over here receiving repairs. Get it in there. What are you doing? Seal the deal on that Panzer IV. There's no excuse for letting that get away unharmed. Oh my god, is he really going to engage these grenadiers with his tank? While a Panzer IV crawls to safety with no health and a damaged engine? We have new resources available. Wow. Flight. Ready at your disposal. Our opponents are seizing That's the, the sector. That's the worst missile allocation of resources I have ever seen. He had that tank in the bag. What a shame. The enemy has driven a wedge in our lines. We have a full squad! Slowly repairing, Pioneers now got a pack and Panzer Grenadiers available over here to protect. His flank is still completely unprotected though. Finally have our Panzer six. And another Sherman is hitting the field. And another Panzer IV, both of them just stockpiling medium tanks. Although Banana in Pajamas has gone close air support. Which means there's not going to be any heavy tanks, just making Panzer IVs, and as soon as he starts clicking that redistribute resources button, no more tanks are going to be on their way. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Hasn't made very heavy use of the commander, though. Not yet. Saving that for the late game, I guess, and he's actually fielding a sniper now. Late game sniper, not a bad call. You find yourself floating a little manpower on this map. The sniper can do quite well. But it's risky and you have to pay very close attention to it when there's tanks and LMGs and 
grenades and all kinds of other scary things that your sniper can get one-shotted by. MG-42 turret The enemy is taking our territory. AT grenade bounces. Rifle squad will be forced to retreat by the Panzer IV, although they do decap at that point. Get a little bit of harassment done. All in all, the battlefield is looking very static now, as both players simply defend. Of course, that works out in the favor of the Oster more than anything, as the game will run longer and longer. Well, not really, actually. I guess I take that back. There's no Tigers on the way, so the Oster late game is really not anything... Not anything special. They're both they're both going to have very even even tools at their disposal for the most part. So far these P4s, however, are doing a lot better than the Shermans are, which both had high explosive rounds equipped, I think? No. They had at half and half between both of them. Panzer Grenadiers making their way forward. Panzer Shrex almost seal the deal. Bundle grenade on the paratroopers. They will retreat just in time, and the AT gun is up to vet two. Doing a good job of screening away both of those Panzer IVs, getting huge hits off. And it will now be forced to retreat. It has take aim active, so it has extremely long range. has pretty decent chance of penetrating the frontal armor of those P4s until they hit Vet 2. 50 cal gets decrewed again. And the sniper probably has something to do with that. It's already got two kills, making its way, doing a good job of supporting these grenadiers from behind. Ooh, anti-tank strafe comes in. Doesn't quite connect though. Nice dodge by the US Forces player there. Has to get his tanks repaired, but he also has to be mindful of those planes. Infantry forces making their way across the right side. Need to contend with those grenadiers. More grenadiers taking control of the center. Still only one AT gun from the Oster. Needs to get himself a second one probably at some point. If he's relying only on his Panzer IVs, that leaves his anti-tank a little, a little bit brittle. But I guess he could also go with Teller Mines. And Panzer Shrex has got a spot of Panzer Shrex, so he's got a decent amount of anti tank. It's just two Shermans. I'm surprised we don't have a third one yet. 160 fuel in the bank, but he's had to spend all of his manpower just on reinforcement. And none of his infantry pushes are going very well. He's taking so much damage. Pushing without his tanks is just a recipe for disaster. Major taking control of the fuel on the left side, cutoff being taken by the Grenadiers, the engagement continues to rage here in the center, not really going in anybody's favor. That Vet 2 AT gun continues to be a pretty significant threat though. It's gonna be Vet 3 soon, when that happens. It's gonna be a real, a real pain for those Panzer IVs to deal with. And I think that the placement of that crew means they actually can't repair. I don't know, I can't tell. Should probably do something about that. Fuel cache gets destroyed by Panzer Shrek fire, and a significant force of American infantry makes its way across the right side to take out. That Grenadier squad, anti infantry strafe, comes in to, I guess, protect them on the retreat. Doesn't really do much of anything else, though. Panzer IV making its way across the right side. Should be able to get some kills here using the buildings to protect it from the AT gun. Oh, 
and the left side has been completely retaken. U.S. map control looking pretty weak, but his Shermans are repaired, and a Scott is in production, leaving himself with not that much anti-tank. I'm sort of surprised that he hasn't got himself a Jackson yet. A Jackson would really help him get those uh, Panzer IVs off his back. This kind of aggression with, the, with those Panzer IVs would be not even remotely possible. Although they get some nice hits with their HE rounds on the Panzer Shrek squads for sure. The T gun continues to get nice hits off. And now it's Vet 3. A Scott is bombarding in this area as well. The sniper's up to 8 kills, so it's doing pretty well, but he needs to be careful with it. Oh! Scott detonates that flamethrower, taking big hits from the AT gun on the rear armor! Oh, last decisive shot misses, and the, and the Panzer IV gets away clean. Recon pass coming across the middle. Squad wipe by the HE rounds by the Shermans coming around the right flank. And they're satisfied with the damage they've inflicted and are going to pull back. That's definitely a nice pickup for the US forces, but they have a long way to go before this game is going to turn. Vet 3 AT guns getting a little overly aggressive, should be taking full advantage of its long range, but instead it gets right into the thick of things, exposing itself to fire from infantry, and if he loses the vet bonus on that, it would just be tragic. But, oh, oh P-47 just came in. Almost did horrible damage to those Panzer Grenadier squads, but fortunately, they do make it through, only taking minor losses. A Scott, however, is bombarding them as they approach, and they'll be forced to retreat regardless. I think I just said regardless twice. Scott and Sherman inflicting damage on a very wounded Grenadier squad trying to retreat. What was that? Did that hit anything? No. I killed a Major, I guess, but other than that, Stuka Dive Bomb didn't really inflict any serious damage. Grenadier's taking control of the munitions point, and Pioneers are going to slowly repair. Panzer IVs. And unfortunately, the AT gun got decrewed, which is such a shame. He had a Vet 3 AT gun, that's a pretty significant loss. He won't be able to utilize take aim until it hits Vet 1 again, that was one of the biggest advantages it had. He definitely shouldn't have moved it up so close, it wasn't really necessary. Sniper continues popping away up to its ninth kill now. Ooh. Incendiary explosive round. Is that really 45 munitions? I mean, it's, it's kind of good. I don't know if it's 45 munitions good. Anti-infantry strafe will pin these infantry down. Smoke grenade goes off on the machine gun, but it doesn't matter. They're pinned by the plane and forced to retreat anyway. The Sherman's making their or Sherman and Scott making their way up the right side. Other Sherman has just finished being repaired now. And those Grenadiers will be forced to retreat. Sherman does not chase. U.S. forces is getting a little bit of tunnel vision right now, I think. The left side is completely undefended. He should probably send some stuff over there. Panzer IV is getting aggressive with Panzer Grenadier support. The AT gun still hasn't been crewed, leaving him with not much anti-tank. He really honestly just needs a Jackson. He just needs one Jackson, and those Panzer IVs will not be able to bully him nearly as hard as they have been this entire game. Sherman 
falling dangerously low. Ambulance gets taken out. Those Panzer IVs are just diving right into his base, and why shouldn't they? There's no hard AT on the field. LNG paratroopers taking heavy damage. The Scots gonna be next to go down, and there it goes. A pack in the back is supporting as well. Shermans have both fallen dangerously low. All their shots are bouncing. One hit on that Panzer IV, but it's still in excellent condition, and an anti-tank strafe just wipes that AT gun off the field completely. Lieutenant goes down. Another full rifle squad goes down. LMG paratroopers retreat somehow. I don't even honestly know why those Panzer IVs retreated out of the base. They probably could have just driven right in there and finished off those Shermans too. Two squads in the back here trying to take control of some territory. All their friends are dead. Back at base. 240 fuel in the bank as U.S. forces. If you just spent that fuel on a Jackson at some point, I feel like this this definitely would not have gone so badly. Grenadier is moving to set up the triple cap now. Squads retreating, no penetration, no no big plays, and here comes the Jackson, but good god, it's so late. So late. He's gonna need to pull off a miracle with these two Shermans and that Jackson if there's gonna be any hope of winning this game. Pathfinder's providing vision for the Jackson, gets a nice opening shot, but they're just gonna blitz right up and kill it from the look of things. The Shermans are not supporting it, and there it goes. Might take out a Panzer IV with it, though. There it goes! Jackson actually does manage to seal the deal on one of those Panzer IVs. So I guess that was worth it. Not really, though. He needed, he needed to keep that alive. He can't trade. He needs to engage cost-effectively, not just trade units. Not when he's this behind. Just waltzing into the U.S. base with the Panzer Grenadiers. Stuka dive bomb falling somewhere. Just in the middle of the base structures. Doesn't actually do that much damage. That's not really that worth it. Panzer IV on the way, and we can see that Banana in Pajamas has not really utilized his doctrinal features that liberally. He got himself three Panzer IVs this game. I think I only saw him use redistribute resources one time. He had such good map control, he didn't really need to give himself extra munitions. He was still able to utilize lots of AT strafes, a handful of anti infantry strafes, a dive bomb here and there, and there you have it. Game over. Axis wins.